Hi, Pete here from Club Engineer. In the previous talk through, we got the robot detecting the water tower and stopping. Now it's time to get the robot to move around the water tower. How hard can that be? Let's get started by having a look at the algorithm we're going to code. First, the robot's going to turn right 45 degrees. Then it's going to move forward around about a quarter of a tile. It will turn left 45 degrees. It will move forward till it's past the water tower. It will move left 45 degrees. It will move forward until it's over the line. And then it will turn right 45 degrees and resume line following. Sounds easy, doesn't it? So let's get started. We'll go to our two sensor line following with water tower program and double click on the water tower my block. This takes us to the navigate the water tower code. And so the first step is for the robot to turn 45 degrees to the right. So we'll drop a move block down. We'll set it to control motors A and C. We'll set it to, hmm, let's say we want the robot to move 45 degrees to the right. So we'll set the uh, turn uh, ratio up to the right and let's say we'll leave it with the motors rotating uh, one rotation. Compile, download and uh, run. Mobot moves forward and it up. Uh, I've got it turning 90 degrees to the left, not 45 degrees to the right. So the first thing to do is to reverse the way it's turning. Uh, so one rotation was uh, clearly too much. So let's set this to degrees. And instead of one rotation, we'll make it 180 degrees. And while we're about it, uh, 75 power was uh, too much. So let's maybe wind that back to 40. We'll compile, download, and run. Robot moves forward and it turns, ah, it's turning the right way. That looks pretty good. Perhaps it's turning a touch too far. So let's adjust this to instead of 180 degrees, maybe 110 degrees. Compile, download, and run. Good, that's looking very good indeed. Now, we want the robot to move forward around about a quarter of a tile. So we'll drop down another move block. We'll set it to control motors A and C. We want it moving forward this time. Uh, let's leave it moving forward one rotation and we'll set that power to 40. We compile, download and run. Robot detects the water tower, turns right. Uh, okay, so one rotation uh, clearly isn't enough. All right. Maybe we'll try uh, 1.2 rotations. Compile, download and run. Robot detects the water tower, turns, moves. That looks pretty good. 1.2 rotations looks about perfect. Now we want the robot to turn to the left 45 degrees. So we have a block here that has it turning to the right 45 degrees. So let's select that and copy it to the clipboard with Control C. We'll paste it down with Control V. We'll drop it onto the sequence beam and we'll simply reverse the turn ratio. Good. Compile download and run. Start the robot. We're starting it from the position where it uh, stops when it detects the water tower now. And that looked, that looked good. Uh, it turned 45 degrees to the right, it moved forward and it turned 45 degrees to the left. All right, now we want to move it, uh, now we want the robot to move forward. So, um, we will copy the move forward block with control 
C, paste it down with control V. Um, what do we want here? Maybe 1.0 rotations. Add a guess, compile, download, and maybe maybe 1.5 rotations at a guess we compile download and run testing 1.5 rotations moves f uh, it looks like 1.5 with a touch too much so we'll change this pick a number changes to 1.0 rotations File, download and run. Robot turns to the right, moves forward, turns to the left, moves forward, and 1.0 rotations looks about perfect. Now we need the robot to turn 90 degrees. I beg your pardon. Now we need the robot to turn 45 degrees to the left. So we have a um, we have a block here that has the robot turning. 45 degrees to the left, so I'll copy that to the clipboard with control C. I'll paste it down here with control V and we'll drop it onto the sequence beam, compile, download and run. Robot moves forward, turns, moves forward, turns again. That's looking very good. Now we want the robot to move forward and reconnect with the line. So let's reuse this block here that was moving the robot away from the line. So I select it, copy it to the clipboard with control C, paste it down with control V, drop it onto the sequence beam, compile, download and run. Our robot turns, moves forward, turns, moves forward, turns, moves forward and reconnects with the line. Look at that, perfectly over the line. Good, we'll go with that. Now there's one more step. We need the robot to make another 45 degree turn uh, to the right. So, uh, we have our block here that gets the robot to turn 45 degrees to the right. I copy it to the clipboard, paste it down onto the sequence beam, and uh, compile, download, and run, and we'll see how that looks. Turns, forward, turns, forward, turns, forward, turns, forward, and turns, and it's perfectly aligned over the line to resume line following. Very good. Let's test this program now in its completion. We'll remove the stop block at the end of the water tower my block. We'll go back to the two sensor line following program and we'll execute the entire program. Compile, download and run. We put the robot away from the water tower. We start the program. It detects the water tower. It turns to the right. It moves forward. Moves, turns to the left. Moves forward. Turns to the left. Moves forward. Turns to the right and resumes line following. That's very good. Test it one more time. Start the robot, moves forward, follows the line, detects the water tower, turns right, moves forward, turns left, moves forward. It's gone slightly askew now, turns left. I think it's gonna miss, ah, oh, and it did. It missed the line. That, um, which was at the second turn where it had to turn back to the left, it didn't turn far enough, which put it on a trajectory away from the line. So what's going on here is that we have seven blocks, each one needing to be executed perfectly repeatably. With each block there's a slight risk of an error, and these errors compound. So if each block is out by only a tiny amount, those errors will add up towards the end. So let's have one more try. We'll put the robot on the other end of the uh, course now. and. Uh, Try running it around the course in reverse. Turn to the right, go straight, turn to the left, go straight. See, a slight error occurred there and it 
it actually overshot the line this time. The previous time, it uh, undershot the line. Hmm. So we've uh, coded our algorithm and we've run it three times and it failed two out of three times. Well, that's very frustrating, isn't it? Especially after we've done uh, all this uh, all this work. So um, you have a shot at implementing that and see if you can do it any better than I could. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at some ways that maybe we can make this uh, algorithm for the robot going around the water tower more reliable. I hope you have more luck with your implementation than I did. The material we're covering in these talk throughs is hard and sometimes, in spite of your best effort, you may find that you're stuck. Often it only takes a small amount of face-to-face -face help to get you back on track. If you think you'd benefit from face-to-face -face help, then open your web browser and type clubengineer.org help. You'll see a list of times and places where face-to-face -face help is available. At these sessions, you'll get all the help you need to get back on track. You may also meet like-minded young engineers such as yourself for collaborating on projects down the track. Face-to-face -face sessions are run over the school holidays and after school during term time. They're available for all ages from years 5 to year 12. We also run face-to-face -face sessions for teachers and mentors. We'd love to meet you at one of these sessions and learn what you have been building.